Tesla schools Chrysler on auto hacking responses. Android's doomed to can't do security. $46 million stolen via email. All that and more coming up on ThreatWire. Greetings, everybody. I'm Patrick Norton, and I am back here in the Hack Warehouse after DEF CON 23, and this is ThreatWire for August 10th, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A huge thanks to everyone watching the show and supporting us at patreon.com slash threatwire. So, 18 months after they report a flaw in Chrysler's Uconnect Entertainment System, security researchers Charlie Miller and Chris Falasek shoot a YouTube video with a wired reporter inside a Jeep Cherokee they take over on the highway, remotely, wirelessly. It's pretty scary. The video goes public, Chrysler decides to release a patch on USB stick, claims the remote access flaws have been shut down on the network side. The video goes ridiculously viral, and Chrysler suddenly issues a recall on 1.4 million vehicles with the Uconnect. 8.4 inch touchscreen systems. And then they tell the press they only learned about the hack specifics a month before. By the way, Chrysler had just agreed to a $105 million penalty for its performance on earlier recalls. Let's contrast that with what happened at DEF CON last week. Kevin Mahaffey, CTO of security firm Lookout and Cloudfare security researcher Mark Rogers showed that they could remotely shut down a Tesla Model S, but only after they'd had physical access and pulled apart the dashboard to get it. They could shut down the motors, but hey, check it out, Tesla set it up so they can't shut down the steering so you still have some control over the vehicle. On stage with those guys? Well, B. Straubel, Tesla's CTO, who thanked them for finding the vulnerabilities and announced that Tesla's bug bounty now maxes out at 10 grand and that the flaws have already been patched by Tesla's over-the-air update system. Quick note to car manufacturers, you might not be as nimble as Tesla, but you better start thinking more seriously about automotive security. Meanwhile, in the wake of Android's stage fright vulnerability, the one that impacts 95% of Android devices where a malicious video MMS can execute code, well, Ars Technica is pointing out that Android's update system is a giant bag of suck, that it doesn't work, that it can't really respond to serious security issues, and that Android is doomed. Or to sound a tad more sophisticated, uh, Google, Samsung, and LG's fix is going to be a patch on 2.6% of all active Android devices. Tops. That's the percentage of devices running Android 5.1 right now. As uh, OpenSignal pointed out in its Android Fragmentation Visualized Report last week, Open Signal's seen over 24,000 distinct Android devices, roughly 78% of which run some flavor of Android 4. something, aka KitKat. Unfortunately, most OEMs and carriers don't care much about Android updates for devices that aren't currently on sale and care even less for non-flagship phones. And updates are, of course, controlled and gated by the carriers, who will often take months to release patches for known flaws that irritate all of their customers. Google told ours after the article went live that, quote, currently 90% of Android devices have a technology called ASLR enabled, which helps protect users from this issue, and that the next release of Messenger also contains a fix that helps mitigate the issue at the application level by requiring the user to click on videos before playing them, and that they recommend that Jellybean and above users switch their default SMS app for additional protection. Oh my goodness, neither of which of course impact the simple fact that it is just about impossible to get serious security updates out to all the Android devices on the planet. Brace for impact, people. And from the cyber theft doesn't have to be incredibly technically sophisticated department, Krebs on Security has a write-up on Ubiquity Networks. They make really amazing Wi-Fi and network devices. They lost $46 million thanks to, quote, employee impersonation and fraudulent requests from an outside entity targeting the company's finance department. I think that's what they told the... Uh the shareholders. Called CEO fraud or business email compromise, Krebs says, quote, it's an increasingly common one targeting businesses working with foreign suppliers and or businesses that regularly perform wire transfer payments. The tool of choice, phishing, for access to the right executive's mailbox or creating lookalike email addresses and sending requests to the finance folks that handle the money and make the wire transfers. Krebs says the FBI's advisory on these scams urges businesses to adopt two-step or two-factor authentication for email where available and or to establish other communication channels such as telephone calls to verify significant transactions. Ubiquity's gotten back less than seven million of the money lost and expects to pretty much permanently lose around 31 million dollars. Ow. 
Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who supported the show so far on Patreon. Our plan is to do ThreatWire three times a week. That's our milestone goal with a rotation of Darren Kitchen, Shannon Morris, and myself. Do us a favor. The only way we can do that without advertisers is if you contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. If you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe go a long way too. You can find all our episodes linked to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internets.